25 years ago, China didn't have a single high-speed train on its tracks. Today, at one factory, an entire bullet train can roll out in just 12 hours, built and checked by a team of only 30 people. Let that sink in for a second. Think about it like this. What takes other countries weeks or months, dozens of workers, long supply chains and slow assembly lines, China can finish in half a day. That's not a small difference. It's the kind of leap that changes how people travel, how cities grow, and who gets the business when the world decides to build the next big railway. In the next section, we're going to rewind the tape and show how China went from late to leader, the choices, the plan, and the moment the country decided to stop catching up and start setting the pace. To understand how far China has come, you have to picture what things looked like about 25 years ago. In the late 1990s, traveling across the country was slow, crowded, and unreliable. Highways were jammed, domestic flights were expensive and limited, and most trains were slow, noisy, and outdated, some averaging less than 60 kilometers per hour. For a nation of over 1.4 billion people, that wasn't just inconvenient. It was a serious obstacle to growth. Factories couldn't move goods fast enough. People wasted hours commuting, and distant regions stayed isolated from the country's booming coastal cities. China's economy was speeding up, but its transportation system was stuck in the past. So the government made a bold decision, not just to improve its railways, but to reinvent them completely. Instead of patching old lines, China set out to build the most advanced, high-speed rail network in the world, from scratch. That decision marked the start of one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in human history, a plan so big it would soon redraw the map of China itself. China's first step wasn't just to lay tracks, it was to design a blueprint for an entire nation. In the early 2000s, planners introduced the four vertical and four horizontal grid, four major high-speed lines running north to south and four running east to west. Imagine drawing a giant hashtag across China, every line representing a route connecting major cities. This plan wasn't about convenience. It was about connecting people, trade, and opportunity. Over time, the idea expanded to an even bigger network. Eight vertical and eight horizontal. That meant linking nearly every major city, from Beijing and Shanghai to remote inland regions, with trains running at 300 kilometers per hour and beyond. Billions of dollars poured in, engineers were trained, and entire cities adjusted to welcome new stations. China wasn't just catching up anymore. It was building a transportation system faster and larger than any other country had ever attempted. Once the plan was set, China moved at a pace the world had never seen. Construction teams worked around the clock, laying tracks through mountains, across rivers, and over vast plains. City by city, the network started to come alive, sleek bullet trains gliding where old diesel engines once crawled. Within just a few years, trains were hitting over 300 kilometers per hour, shrinking journeys that used to take half a day into just a few hours. The trip from Beijing to Shanghai, for example, went from more than 12 hours by car to just four and a half hours by train. It was like upgrading from dial-up internet to fiber optics. Suddenly, travel was smooth, fast, and reliable. Each new line didn't just connect cities, it connected economies, families, and futures. By the mid-2010s, China's high-speed rail web had stretched thousands of kilometers, linking nearly every major region. And the rest of the world started to notice. Because what took others decades, China had achieved in barely one. By the end of 2023, China had accomplished something no country in history had ever done. It built the largest and fastest high-speed rail network on Earth. The numbers are, honestly, jaw-dropping. The country's total railway system now stretches over 159,000 kilometers, which is nearly four times the circumference of the Earth. Out of that, more than 45,000 kilometers are dedicated high-speed lines more than the rest of the world combined. And these aren't empty tracks. They connect almost every major city, turning exhausting 10-hour road trips into quick two-hour rides, 
Trains leave every few minutes, arrive on time, and cost less than flying. In fact, many Chinese now prefer trains over planes because they're faster, smoother, and drop passengers right in the city center. This isn't just transportation, it's transformation. China didn't just build railways, it built the backbone of a modern economy. China's high-speed rail isn't just about travel, it's an economic engine. By connecting rich coastal cities with inland provinces, it has reduced regional inequality and opened new markets. A factory in Chengdu can now ship goods to Shanghai overnight. Tourists can visit smaller cities that were once hard to reach, boosting local businesses. The network also created millions of jobs, from construction and engineering to tech and logistics. And because trains leave every 10 minutes and run on time, business travel has become faster and more predictable than flying. Many routes are now replacing domestic flights entirely, cutting both costs and carbon emissions. In short, high-speed rail didn't just move people, it moved the entire economy forward. So how can China build a full high-speed train in just 12 hours with only 30 workers? The secret is automation. Inside a CRRC factory, one of China's rail giants, everything runs like a perfectly timed orchestra. Robotic arms weld steel with millimeter precision, AI systems track thousands of sensors, and smart machines move parts across the floor without human help. Each train is made from over 550,000 components, from aerodynamic shells to advanced braking systems. In most countries, this would take hundreds of workers and weeks to finish. In China, it's done in half a day. The 30 human workers aren't building. They're supervising, checking, and fine-tuning the process, like pilots guiding an autopilot system. This is the heart of China's smart manufacturing revolution, where AI, robotics, and design merge into one seamless process. Behind every high-speed train that races across China stands one company, CRRC, the world's largest rail manufacturer. It doesn't just dominate China, it dominates the entire global market. CRRC controls around 53% of the world's rail equipment industry, more than all its Western competitors combined, including Siemens from Germany, Alstom from France, and Bombardier from Canada. Within China, CRRC builds roughly 70% of all high-speed trains, giving it massive production experience. But its reach doesn't stop there. The company has exported over 4,000 trains to more than 100 countries, from subway cars in Argentina and Brazil to high-speed lines in Southeast Asia and even the United States. In 2016, the Chicago Transit Authority signed a deal with CRRC to build 846 subway cars, a Chinese company building American trains on U.S. soil. To prove it was the new global leader in rail tech, China unveiled its pride, the Fuxing series. These aren't ordinary trains, they're symbols of national achievement. The Fuxing can hit speeds of 350 km per hour in regular service and up to 400 km per hour in testing, faster than a jetliner at takeoff. But what really impressed the world was reliability and safety. Fuxing trains can run over 10 million km without major mechanical issues. Inside, they're ultra-modern, Wi-Fi, quiet cabins, real-time ride data, and energy-efficient systems that consume 17% less power than earlier models. When foreign delegations visit China, they're often taken on these trains, a moving display of technological pride. It's China's way of saying, we don't just make fast trains, we make the future of transportation. China quickly realized its rail success could do more than move people. It could move politics and partnerships. Through the Belt and Road Initiative, China began exporting its high-speed rail technology across Asia, Africa, and Europe. Each project became a, a symbol of cooperation and influence. In Indonesia, the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed line became Southeast Asia's first bullet train, cutting travel time from 3 hours to 40 minutes. In Laos, China built a 1,000-kilometer railway connecting the landlocked country directly to Chinese markets. 
Even countries like Egypt and Thailand have signed on to similar projects. These railways don't just carry passengers, they carry Chinese standards, technology, and workers. Every new line strengthens Beijing's global footprint, giving China both economic returns and political leverage. China's unstoppable rise in high-speed rail has made Western powers nervous. For decades, Europe and Japan led this field, but now China is setting the pace, building more lines every year than Europe and Japan combined. In response, the United States and European Union are scrambling to catch up. President Donald Trump's administration has pushed for Made in America infrastructure revival. But political gridlock and high costs keep United States rail projects crawling. For example, California's bullet train, planned over a decade ago, still isn't complete, while China builds entire networks in the same time. Europe, meanwhile, worries about losing global contracts to Chinese firms that build faster and cheaper. The result? A new technological Cold War, not fought with weapons, but with trains, trade, and speed. China isn't slowing down. It's accelerating. The next generation of trains, called maglevs, float on magnetic fields, reaching 620 kilometers per hour, nearly half the speed of sound. Test lines in Shanghai and Qingdao are already proving this futuristic tech works. Engineers are even discussing Hyperloop-style vacuum trains that could one day connect Beijing to Shanghai in under two hours. Beyond technology, China plans to build transcontinental routes, linking Asia to Europe and even Africa. Imagine boarding a train in Beijing and arriving in London days later without ever leaving the track. That's China's long-term dream, a global rail network powered by its technology and vision. For Beijing, this isn't just about transport. It's about shaping the 21st century. While others debate, China keeps building. And in this race, speed isn't just power, it's destiny. China's high-speed rail story isn't just about trains. It's about how vision, discipline, and speed can transform a nation. While other countries argue over plans, China turns blueprints into reality. So, what do you think? Is China's railway revolution a model the rest of the world should follow? Or a warning about how power moves on rails? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this deep dive into China's rise, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, because we're just getting started. Every week, we break down how technology, politics, and power are reshaping our world. Stay curious, and we'll see you in the next video.